I create my stencils out of sheets of acetate on which I freehand draw out my image using colored markers, starting with light hues and steadily using darker tones to define greater detail. I often use several photo references to create my drawing when possible. Once my drawing is complete, I use an X-Acto knife to cut out the pieces from my stencil. To date, my largest stencil has more than 1,500 pieces cut out of it. Once the stencil is complete, I place it down on printmaking paper and hand paint through the stencil onto the page. What I have right here is a stencil um, placed down on a white sheet of Stonehenge paper and so you can see the stencil material is this clear thin acetate um, that I've hand cut out with an X-Acto knife um, and use Sharpies and what I'm going to be doing is placing it down on the paper and under the paper as you can see to the side is this board that's black, um, it's metallic and I can place magnets onto it, which, as you can see, they are magnetic, um, will hold onto the paper and keep the stencil in place as I go through the process of actually using watercolor and homemade inks to hand paint through the stencil onto the white sheet of paper. And the reason I use this printmaking paper is that uh, the difference between printmaking paper and watercolor paper is that watercolor paper is designed, it has what's called sizing. Um, it's kind of what is a little bit of the glue element that holds all the paper together on the surface so that the water will stay on the surface for as long as possible so you can move and manipulate it. However, printmaking paper has the sizing within. Um, so it's designed to be much more, um, much better at absorbing liquids and things than watercolor paper and I'm wanting the inks and watercolors to be absorbed as quickly as possible so they don't eventually like get underneath the stencil and blur and blotch. Okay, so I just finished hand painting on the stencil. Um, as you can see, the stencil is laid out on a sheet of paper. The stencil is this clear acetate and all around here are all these black magnets because um, I have a board painted with metallic paint, so um, the surface I'm working on um, is magnetic. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up all the magnets I've got on here. And this right here is a Lake Erie water snake. It was once an endangered species, or at least threatened species, um, but it's since recovered. So now I'm going to peel back the stencil. And See how it turned out. Very cool. There's still a little dirt and watercolor. It's a little crusty. Well, looks great. Um, yeah, a little cleanup to do and might darken up some areas, but um, other than that, get to move on and uh, start doing some background shading before doing multiple layers. What we've got going on here is got the stencil already applied. It has a another clear acetate stencil over it protecting it so all the white spaces between all the pieces within the stencil will remain white while the whole background um, will then receive the color. And then over here, as you can see a little bit, there's more stencils of a similar nature that are blocking out so that this whole area will remain white but the outline of the snakes will um, create a converse image. Right here I've got some ink, it's a mixture of watercolor and some homemade earth inks made out of dirt water and maple syrup, kind of a little mix of the two um, with a pretty cool atomizer device um, that will allow me to spray things. Because um, uh, I've had a little, not the best time with uh, airbrushes. so. 
We'll see how this goes. And as I do it, I want to, I'm trying to keep it all spread out so not one, two area gets too kind of moisturized and saturated because the paper will start to ripple and warp. Ideally, too, I'm thinking of having the top of the page lighter with a little bit more weight and darkness down lower, um, but I'll kind of have to see that over time. And with something like this, too, um, I might have enough space to be able to move back and forth um, and while it dries, but I also mean need to let the whole thing dry for a bit and do a second coating. Otherwise, the uh, water droplets can start to build up and we'll start joining together and creating larger splotches of color, which um, can be a cool effect, but I'm not sure if that's what I want to go with. Okay, changing angles here to give you an opportunity to see a little bit more clearly since I think on the previous video the spray ink that I'm spraying really didn't show up too well but just because it's so um just the angle and how light the ink is but um yeah here's my tool that I'm blowing through to spray ink out onto the paper so here's the piece after I finished spraying multiple layers on because I don't think it showed up all that well um, in the video when I was doing the spraying, but you can see the textured speckled background effect that occurs from using the atomizer. Um, and moving over here, so this is where elements were blocked out. And you can see how the snakes appear, and then here's the white area where the text will be digitally added to my book. And here's a nice close-up of some of that speckle. And it produces a really nice effect and makes that snake pop. There we go. So now here we have the finished piece. As you can see it has the multiples as well as the cleanly blocked out image. And now zoomed in closer. <laughs> 